Good morning, saints of God. God bless you on this Monday morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Actually, this is the week. Once again, the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. Good morning, Patrick. Great to see you coming on this morning once again, buddy. Praise God. So glad to be up this morning in the presence of the Lord. Graham, God bless you as you're coming on, sir, for the our morning session. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful day. I hear the birds singing. The sun is shining. Jesus is alive. Praise God, and we are blessed and highly favored. God bless you too, Graham. Roseanne, God bless you. Praise God. Amen. We'll just wait as we normally do, just a, a minute or two as we wait for people to join us this morning for our Bible study this week as we begin our week of prayer in prayer. Danny, God bless you. Claver, great to see you on. Deborah, God bless you and Mao and Don. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. So awesome that you're joining us this morning as we begin our week in the presence of the Lord in a quick, encouraging word. Praise God and in prayer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is good. Thank you, Danny, for your prayers. God bless you. Barbara, God bless you. Diane, good morning, dear. Praise God to you, ladies. Good morning, Edith. Amen. What a wonderful, wonderful resurrection weekend we've had. Aren't you glad Jesus is alive, everybody? We start our week knowing that we serve a resurrected King. Marlene, God bless you. Good morning, Mike. God bless you. Norma, God bless you. Good morning. Praise God. It's wonderful to be able to start every single week knowing that we have a resurrected Savior. We don't serve a dead God. I'm so glad that we don't serve a dead God. I'm so glad we don't serve some dead, voiceless idol. But we serve the God of heaven and the God of earth, the God who made all things, the God who's alive. Amen. And he's with us every day, never leaves us or forsakes us. What an awesome God we serve. Cliff, good morning, sir. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have your Bible, everybody, go to Philippians. And we're going to be in Philippians chapter 3. As we just encourage each other in the Word of God this morning. And I get a chance to pray for your week. That the favor and the blessing of God would be on you all week. And that you would grow exponentially in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, Brent. Great to have you on, Harriet, also. Good morning, good morning. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's get ready to get started, everybody, because I know you have a busy week, many of you coming up, and uh, we're going to ask the Lord's blessing upon our time. Father, we thank you, and we give you praise for this Monday morning. Thank you for resurrection, uh, our resurrection celebrations this weekend, Lord as we have celebrated that Jesus is alive, that we serve, as we have said, the true and living God. Thank you, Lord, that you've not left us alone on this earth, but today and every day, we have the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're with us, that you're the comforter, that you're the one who is to come up beside us and support us and help us every single day. Thank you for guiding and leading us into all truth, and thank you for the presence of our God. We give you praise, Lord, as we come around the table of your word this morning. Thank you for the word that orders our steps. Thank you for the word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And thank you that the word will give us strength throughout this week and make us victorious and overcomers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, I pray your presence. Your presence will be with us this morning and throughout the week. I pray that everyone will sense the presence of the Lord and they'll just know that God is with them as a truth. 
Bless our time together this morning, Lord. May the word of God enrich and strengthen our faith. We pray in the name of Jesus, and you might want to say, Amen. Praise God. Philippians chapter 3, everybody. Let's go there real quick. Just something to work on this week. I like, I like to do this in my own life. I like to get a portion of scripture and allow, uh, allow it to work on me. Maybe me not work the word. Maybe the word work on me. And I pray that the same for you. As last week we shared about how it's important to set our minds on, on heavenly things, especially today especially all that's going on today. But Philippians chapter 3, as I was praying, uh, and that's important too, dear family, to pray. Uh, I know Bible study is very important. You should just read your Bible, but it's also important to pray and ask the Holy Spirit what portions of Scripture would be good for you. He knows your life. He knows everything about you. So it's important to spend some time. And I want you to know that before I preach a sermon, I pray and I ask the Lord, to give me the message for the people of God. And even while we do these Monday morning encouraging words for the week, I do the same thing. And this came to my spirit. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 says, That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Praise God. Very applicable for this weekend, isn't it? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death now I, I got two versions here in this Bible I have King James and I have the New Living Translation beside it and so I love the King James but I also like to, to read uh, a, a, some would call a simpler version to help people understand what was just said uh, Philippians chapter uh, 3 verse 10 in the new NLT says, Now I have given up everything else. I have found it to be the only way to really know Christ. Praise God. And to experience the mighty power that brought him back to life again. And to find out what it means to suffer and to die with him. Praise God. That's, that's, a, good, that's a, good, uh, a good way of writing that. Uh, praise God. That we may know him. In the power of his resurrection how do we how are we going to know him this week in the power of his resurrection well it's going to be by the holy spirit because it's that same spirit that raised christ from the dead it's the spirit of god that raised christ from the dead the only way to know the power of the resurrection is to be led by the spirit of god and to walk in the spirit of god and so i pray this week that this week we will uh, really put a dependency on the Holy Spirit this week in our lives. Praise God. You know, God has given us His Spirit and so many times, I must admit, there's even times in my life where I'm trying to figure it out myself. Sorry, everybody. I'm just going to change this because it may not sound right for you. Um, uh, so many times in our lives, we... Uh, we try to figure things out on our own. So I just pray this week that we will put a dependency on the Holy Spirit, a complete leading and walking in the Spirit for everything, as that Bible says. Praise God. And that we would know how to fellowship with God, even, even in times where it's not easy. We would have that sweet fellowship with God this week. The Bible goes on and says, if by any means I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Verse 11 in the NLT says, So whatever it takes, I will be one who lives in the fresh newness of life of those who are alive from the dead. We will live in the power of his resurrection and that we may obtain the resurrection of the dead. Praise God. Well, that can be twofold. One, it can be Every day we're living in resurrection power with other people and that someday we're going to experience the resurrection which is coming soon at the coming of Jesus. Regardless, we're living in that, in that place of power. Praise God. Hallelujah. I pray this week for you, dear saints of God, that you live in that power.
power this week. You experience that power, that strength from, from the resurrected Savior, praise God, and that you overcome and nothing overcomes you. I'm leading you somewhere in the scripture, but that you overcome and nothing overcomes you. And in the context of the scripture, the past doesn't overcome you, but that you live in the present glorious promises of God this week and that you experience all of God's abundance and your life moves forward. Hallelujah. In that glory, in that realm. Praise God. Amen. And then, and then the Bible says this. It says, not as though I have already attained. Either we're already perfect, Paul says, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. Hallelujah. I love this. I'm going to read it in NLT too. I don't mean to say I am perfect. I haven't learned all I should even yet. I think that's all of us. We haven't learned everything that we should. I, I hear some pastors. I hear Christians who say, oh, I act like they know it all. None of us know it all. And may we never have and may we never have that mindset. And I pray that we don't have that mindset this week. We don't know it all. We haven't experienced it all. We haven't uh, attained everything that God has for us. And neither have we learned every integral detail of the Bible or experienced the revelation that God has for us. May, may we walk in humility throughout this week and wait on the Lord. And realize that we don't have all the answers. Praise God. But he does. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I like that. When he, when he says, I don't mean to say I am perfect. We're not perfect. But we are pursuing perfection. I haven't learned all that I have, have should yet. But I keep working towards that day when I will finally be all that Christ saved me to be. For and wants me to be. Praise God. May I pray that this week. Lord, help us to be this week. Everything that you want us to be. Everything that we're supposed to be. Everything that you have promised us to be. I pray that this week we will, we will grow in that understanding. There's so much more, Lord, that you want us to be. I pray that the children of God and the saints of God watching this morning will grow in that understanding as Paul walked in humility and Lord may we obtain more this week and become more like Jesus hallelujah may we become more like Jesus in our character may we become more like Jesus in our nature may we become more like Jesus in faith in our thinking in our speaking in our talking in our actions and and how we communicate and and how we treat people. May we become more like Jesus. Praise God. Amen. The Bible then goes on to say in verse 13, Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it. Uh, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before me. I like this, that I, I this word apprehend comes up a few times. It is that, if I, that I may apprehend that which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus, that I may apprehend what the very things of why Christ apprehended me, and that uh, that I count not myself to apprehended it yet. I haven't gotten everything uh, for what reasons Christ came and got us. Hallelujah. But the one thing he says I do, I forget those things which are behind, reaching for unto the things which are before me. And that's really what was coming into my spirit, that this resurrection power this week would help us to move on from the past. Praise God. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the power of Christ, the power of his resurrection, when he triumphed over sin, death, hell, and the grave, when he took the keys of, of from Satan, praise God, and and he destroyed the works of darkness when, and making an open spectacle of every, everyone and everything that came against him. And he ascended into the heavens from the Mount of Olives and sits at the right hand of the Father, praise God, 
eternally making intercession for us as our high priest. May, may that power help us move on from our past. Praise God. Past Dwelling in the past, living in the past is an extremely dangerous place because it limits the promises of God and it limits the experiences that Christ has for us in our present and in our future. And so many people live in the past. And this week I'm praying that if you're struggling with a past experience, a, a, a moment of trouble, a moment of rejection, a moment of failure, a moment where you feel like you missed God or missed uh, certain opportunities in your life, what it is, what, or what people have done for to you. I'm praying that you're able to release that this week and move on in the name of Jesus. Praise God. A moment of failure, that you're able to move on from that so that it doesn't constantly come up in your prayer time with God. And it's not something that you mention anymore, not something you think about but that you're moving on. And if anyone had something, family, to uh, to dwell upon concerning their past, it was the Apostle Paul. I mean, he despised Christ. I mean, when Jesus walked the earth, he despised him. He despised Christians. He despised the way. He despised the, the preaching of the kingdom. He embraced the law of Moses, and he refused to give up uh, on Jewish culture so much that he persecuted Christians and even killed, ordered for the killing of Stephen. If anyone had a, a reason to dwell upon their past and the failures of their past, it was the Apostle Paul. What he said was, I've got to, I've got to uh, attain the power of the resurrection and I've got to let go of all of that so I can move on to what God called me to be. And who I'm supposed to be and experience that mercy and that grace and that and that loving kindness that's new every morning so I can move on into that realm of God's blessing and I'm praying this week that every one of us is able to do that praise God and I, I want to read this I want to read this in, in the NLT no, dear brothers, I am still not all that I should be. I think all of us can say that. We're not all that we should be, but we can, we can, this week, this week in the name of Jesus, we can, we can move towards that, can't we? Praise God. Let me see the time here. There we go. I am bringing all my energies to bear on this one thing, he says. I'm, I'm, all of my strength all of my energy in that resurrection power hallelujah he says this forgetting the past praise god forget the past let it go it's so limiting it, it's so it freezes you and it freezes you so much that you can't enjoy everything that's around you today because you're so dwelling on the past. I've been there. I know what that's like. It's terrible. It's a horrible place to be. I, you, you sit there and you can't even enjoy the people that are around you. You, you can't even see the things that God's doing today. Uh, you get discouraged whether or not God's working in your life. You feel like God has forgotten you. It's a, it's a trap of the devil. And, uh, and then you can't move forward and really start experiencing some of that new st stuff that God's got for you. And sometimes we dwell on past relationships and broken friendships and people that hurt us that we can't even enjoy the wonderful people that are in our lives today because we don't trust or because we think maybe they're going to do the same thing to us. So we become isolated and we become so guarded that no one can come into our lives where we can really enjoy them anymore. And Paul is saying, let's forget that. Let's forget the past failures in our lives. Uh, there's enough people around us sometimes that try to remind us of that. But let me tell you, you've got to do that. Forget your past failures. Forget your past sin and your past mistakes. The power of the death, burial, and resurrection washed all that away as you went before God and repented and asked Him for forgiveness. It's gone. 
You can't live in righteousness if you're still condemning yourself for past failures. So you've got to let that go and move on too. And I pray that you're able to do that. Maybe this week this doesn't apply to you, but it may apply to you sometime in your future. So I pray that you're able to do that. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Oh, looking forward, I like that. To what lies ahead. Again, the past will keep you here. It won't let you get to here. And that's why Paul says, I'm forgetting the past so I can look, go forward. I can look ahead. Amen. Praise God. To what lies ahead? I strain to reach the end of the race and to receive the prize for which God is calling us up to heaven because of what Christ Jesus did. He said, I'm so letting go of the past that I'm going for heaven. I'm heaven bound. I'm I'm going to be with Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm living with Jesus in the present. I'm living with Jesus tomorrow. And I'm going to live with Jesus forever. And I am pressing towards that great, greatest prize, which is the rapture of the church. Hallelujah. Which is the coming of our Lord, which is my departing and our departing from the earth into the eternal presence of God to stand before his throne with all of the saints of God and to be highly favored and rewarded of the Lord. I'm forgetting the past. I'm not going to let the past hold me back. Uh, you know, that's going back to Egypt in that context. You know, so many uh, times, uh, like the children of Israel, we get discouraged in Christ, or we should never do that, but we do. We get discouraged with the experiences of church and all of that. We feel like sometimes God let us down, which he's never has. He's always there for us. But we look at those things, sometimes of what we don't have, and we go back to what we used to be, which can cause us to miss the glorious promise of eternity. Let's never go back to Egypt. Let's not dwell on the things that we used to be before Christ. Hallelujah. Let's dwell on and press on with all strength and all energy this week. What Jesus has made us to be. We are much better in Christ then we war without him. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm almost done. And I pray, family, that you'll have the strength, that you'll have the energy, that you'll have the power to press on to all that lies ahead for you and reach out to that, that end goal, which is to be more like Jesus, to experience all of the promises of God, and someday stand before the throne of Christ in that glorious place called eternity. Amen. Praise God. I like this verse 15 or verse 14. I press towards the mark for the prize of a high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's what the, that's what the King James Version says. I press towards the mark for the high prize of the calling in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm pressing towards that mark of a higher calling. You have been called, dear family, to a higher place than you presently are. You haven't attained everything yet. There's so much more that you're going to be. There's so much more God has planned you to be. And I'm praying that you, that you come into that, praise God, that you come into more of the power and strength and blessing of the Lord. You're not there yet. I pray this week we'll be a part of that journey. And this is, even this very day, you're going to experience some of that transforming, transforming work of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I like verse 15. Let us there, let us, and I close with this. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if any things ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. I'm going to read it with the NLT and then we'll pray. I hope all of you who are mature Christians will see eye to eye with me on these things. And if you disagree on some point, I believe that God will make it a plan, plain, God will make it plain to you if you fully obey the truth you have. May God reveal this revelation of this scripture to us today. Praise God. Amen. Let's let it all go, family. Let's even let go of 
and, and stop dwelling on some of the things that have transpired over the couple of years. That doesn't mean that we don't focus on what people are trying to do, but let's, let's, let's dwell on those beautiful places and that amazing place that Christ is taking us. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm praying that you're going to have an awesome week this week. And I'm praying this week that you will not be conformed to this world, but you will be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that perfect, that it, what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God as you allow this scripture to guide you and lead you this week in forgetting the past. Hallelujah. Let it go. Maybe you'll put that up on the screen for me this morning. I'm letting it go. Praise God. Maybe you'll put up on the screen, I'm letting it go. And maybe you'll put up on the screen to go on to all that God wants me to be. Hallelujah. I'm letting people go. I'm letting past experiences go. I'm letting, once again, past mistakes and past failures. I'm letting go past past events that I've been dwelling on and focusing on and, and just uh, regurgitating and boiling in and stewing in and being angry about and frustrating about and being condemning in my life. I'm letting it all go. I'm letting it go this week because it's been holding me back too long. I'm not going to let it do that. There's so much more for me in my future. Praise God. My past is... The, let me let me say this for one more thing before we pray. Um, we're not going to allow our past to define our present. We're not going to allow our past to determine our future. Praise God. Hallelujah. Letting it all go. His mercies new today. His mercies are new today. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise. I bless the people of God. I love the people of God. And I know they love you. And we love you, Father. We love you because you've given us life. And life more abundantly. We love you because you destroyed the works of darkness over our lives. We love you because you set us free from the works uh, of darkness and you set us free from the power of Satan that was over our lives. And we're no longer part of the kingdom of darkness. We have been translated and brought into the kingdom of light, the kingdom of our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus, your son. And we have been made heirs and join heirs with him. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. We're part of the family of God. Thank you, Lord. We're part of the kingdom of God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, that we have life eternal and we are set apart, meet for the master's use and sealed for your glory. Thank you, Lord. We are, we belong to you. No one owns us, Lord, but you. Praise God. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that lives in us. Thank you that our sins have been washed away and our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Thank you for the power of the resurrection. Thank you for the victory of the cross. Thank you for the authority of your word and thank you for the measure of faith that you've given unto all of us. I pray this week, Lord, that as we journey throughout this week, not knowing what this week holds, that this week, Lord, we will focus on this portion of scripture and allow the lamp that your word is to light our path and to free us from our past and allow our mind and our hearts to be renewed in the promises of our God. Father, by the Spirit we submit to, asking you to help us to release people, to release situations, to move on from past events, to let go of past failures, to let go of things that we, decisions we made where we missed good opportunities even for our lives. Lord, just to let it all go and to, as Paul said, to, to allow ourselves to apprehend what of the purpose of why you apprehended us, why you called us. Praise God. Help us to forgive past people. Help us to release past family members. Hallelujah. And help us to live in this present moment in the glory of God and in the fullness of your promises. And I pray that the people of God are able to move forward, move forward. This will be a this will be a 
This will be a, a, a week of shift and change. This will be a week of new beginnings and new directions for your people as they move forward and move beyond all of that and cross that bridge into freedom, freedom from the past. Praise God. Bless your people this week, Lord, I pray. Thank you for holding everyone in your skillful right hand. Thank you for setting your angels around the people of God. Thank you, God, for protecting your people. My Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I pray the people of God are able to fulfill your will this week. I pray the people of God will not be led into temptation, but this week you will deliver them from the evil one, that they will overcome every temptation, Lord, and, and gain constant victory, daily victory over those things in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray your people will have the mind of Christ this week. They'll see everything from a godly, Christ-like, biblical perspective and walk in it. Bless your people with joy. Bless your people with peace. Bless your people with happiness this week, Lord. Bring them into abundance. Bring them into prosperity. Bring them into great health. Hallelujah. Help them find new relationships. But most importantly, Lord, I pray they be in your presence. Sense your presence. Be fulfilled in your presence. And I just bless the people of God and give you praise for their precious lives. Thank you for a successful week, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I like that. Deborah says, I'm passing over. Yes, you are, Deborah. Yes, you are. It starts with believing in your heart. It starts with a confession of faith, and that's what you've done. You are, and we believe it. Amen. Well, God bless you, dear family. Thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you for our uh, being in the Word of God in prayer this morning as we started our week. Have an awesome week, everybody. I love you so much. I'll see you Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m., right here on Facebook Live again. Remember, you are strong in the Lord and the power of His might. God bless you, everybody.